Hello and welcome to this new series. In this series, we're going to be looking at creating a content management system that is powered using AI. So without further ado, let's get coding. So to start off, let's open up a terminal window. If you're on Macintosh, uh, this should be pretty much the same. Let's navigate to a directory where we want to store the contents of this uh, project. So I'm going to cd into a folder that I have called dev. And then I'm going to make a directory and we're going to call this ghostwriter. Let's cd into ghostwriter and we're going to make a new directory and we're going to call this API. So this is where we're going to actually create the API and then we're going to create an Angular application. Um, so before we actually go any further, it's probably best us talking about what technology we're going to be using for this. So for the API backend, we're going to be using Node.js and Express with the OpenAI library. On the front end, we're going to be using Angular. So before we go any further, uh, you'll need to install Node.js. You can do this by navigating to nodejs.org and clicking on the LTS version here. Uh, we won't be using the current version. Uh, we'll be using the LTS version for the long-term support. Uh, the current version could come with some bugs and it may have some instability issues. As for Angular, what you can do is you can go to angular.io slash CLI. You'll have to install this after you install node because this is a node package um, and then what you'll do after installing node uh, you'll type this into your terminal window and that should install angular globally for you and this will then allow you to run ng help ng generate and the one that we'll be using to initialize our project will be ng new okay so with that all installed uh, let's actually generate the angular side so we can do ngn for ng new and we can say ghost writer. Get rid of that E at the end there. Press enter. This may take a bit of time if it's the first time doing it. So yes, we would like to use Angular routing and for this project, we're gonna be using SCSS. Uh, you may want to pause the video until that's finished installing. Okay, so once that's finished, uh, let's run DIR inside of the terminal to check our directories. So we have a directory called API, which we created manually. And we have a new directory called Ghostwriter, which is the Angular application. So I'll be using Visual Studio Code for my editing. So to open that in this directory, I'll type code and then dot, and that should open up Visual Studio Code editor for me. And we can see here we have our API directory and our Ghostwriter directory with our Angular application inside. So let's open up a new terminal window and we're CD into our API directory. From here, what we want to do is we want to run npm init to initialize a new npm project. And we're just gonna enter through all of these. Is that okay? Yes. And now we want to install some packages. To do that, we run npm i and we're gonna install express, body parser, OpenAI and also .env. So once they've installed, you can open up your package.json file and you can see the libraries that have installed here. So let's run through them. Express is the framework we'll be building the API on. .env is just a secure file we can store our tokens in. BodyPass will ensure that our content that we pass through is in JSON format and also OpenAI will allow us to access the ChatGPT and also the DALI libraries. So after doing that, let's create a new file called index.js and let's start actually coding. So the first thing we want to do is import the OpenAI library. So to do this, we do const and then configuration. And then we want to import OpenAI API. And this will be equal to require and then open OpenAI. Next, we want to import express. And that will be equal to require express. And then we can import our body parser and that will be equal to require body parser. 
And then last on the import list is the .env. So this is slightly different. We actually just go require .env and then .config as a function on the end here. And this will allow us to access our .env file via our processes. So let's create that .env file. So we create a new file and we put .env. And in here we want to create an API token and that's going to be equal to an empty string for now. And let's actually go get our API token from OpenAI. So if you navigate to openai.com and then click on the developers at the top here and overview. Once you log in, you'll be presented with a dashboard and up the top on the right hand side here, you can click view API keys. And this is where you can generate yourself a new key. I already have a key generated, so I'll be using that. And then what you do is you paste your API key into here. Click save and then we can close that. So we can test that's working. So if we now console.log and we want to console log process.env and then our API underscore token. Click save and at the bottom here we can run node and then dot. And we can see it's passed back the token that we pasted into our environment file. Let's get rid of this. So now that we've got our API key and we've tested that it's accessible via the environment file, uh, let's connect to OpenAI. So we run const token, and that's going to be equal to process.env.api underscore token. And then what we want to do is create a const config, and that's going to be equal to new configuration using the class we imported up here. I'm going to pass API key and that's going to be equal to this token that we've had up here and then what we want to do is we want to actually create the connection to OpenAI to do that we say const OpenAI is equal to new OpenAI API and then we pass this config variable in next let's create our application so we do that by creating const equals express and we tell express to use our body parser we say app.use and then body parser.json and now we can actually start creating our API. So I'm going to create a post, so app.post, and this post is going to be called slash write. And that's going to take in a request and return a response. So when we post this data across, we're going to be sending data that's going to be called a message and also a style. and that will be coming from the request.body. So let me explain what these are quickly for a second. The message is the actual content that we want to ask OpenAI to write a document about, and the style will be the style of the, the system that we want to use. So say, for example, with ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo, we can actually turn around and say, you are a sci-fi writer, or you are a children's book writer, or you are a legal document writer and it will take on that persona for us. So once we've got that information through, we want to pass that information through to OpenAI. So we say openai.create chat completion, and then we pass through the data that we've got here. So the model is going to be GPT-3.5-Turbo. If you have access to version four, you can actually use model GPT-4. And then here we have messages, and that's going to be equal to an array. And we're going to have a couple of objects in here. The first object will have a role, and that will be a role of type system. And the content for this is we're going to pass through that style that we have above. The next one is a role of user, and the content will be the message that we pass through. So that's everything we need to set up the chat completion. So now OpenAI returns a promise, so we have our data here. Okay, so now we want to pass the data back to the front end. We do this by saying res.send, and we're going to be passing back the data dot data dot choices, and we're going to return the first instance from that, and we want to return message dot content. 
If we get an error, uh, we want to create a catch here, and then we, what we're going to do is we're going to console log that error out. So let's just test that this is now working. So we can do app.listen, and we're going to listen on port 3000. And then we can just console log out that the survey is running on port 3000. If we click save, jump down to the terminal here and run node and dot, we can see our server is now running on port 3000. Now for this, I recommend a piece of software called Postman. It's great for testing your endpoints um, or any endpoints in particular. So we've created a new request here and we've gone for a post request. And we've put in our local host at port 3000 slash write because that is the endpoint that we've created here. And then we've gone to body, raw, and then we've selected JSON from here. So we have our JSON content. And in here we've got an object. This is a style. You are a sci-fi writer and the message is can you write a short novel about traveling to mars this should be around 100 words so if we click send so there are no errors um, and we got a response from the server it's given us a bit of content here the year was 2045 and humanity had finally achieved a remarkable milestone and that ends with their journey has just begun but the possibilities were truly limitless so this works great for for short messages but we want documents we want to be able to write documents so we need to be able to make multiple requests using one input so to do this i'm actually going to replace all of this with a function so let's create a new function down here and we're going to call this uh, gpt com just GPT communication and this will take in the resolve that we have up here so let's copy these lines of code from here into here and let's also create a new array at the top so let messages and that's going to be equal to an empty array and inside here what we want to do is push these into the array So we'll say messages dot push and then we'll insert that content into there uh, without the array surrounding it and then this messages here will just be equal to messages so as per the documentation so let's bring over the open ai documentation if we go to the chat completion when we get a response back here we have a finish reason and the finish reason is either stop, length, content filter, or null. So the two that we're gonna be targeting here is stop and length. So stop means it's completed, and length means it's got more to come. So here, for now, let's just reference the GP comms with the resin side, and inside this then statement, let's say if, and we'll just copy this from here, data dot data choices and the first instance and then we want to input the finish reason here I'm going to say if that's not equal to stop then we want to push that message as a user into that array and then we want to rerun this again but if that has finished, what we can do is we can do res.send. And this res.send, we're going to have messages dot filter. And we want to filter where the role is equal to assistant to ensure that we get the actual responses from OpenAI. And then we're going to map all of those together. Right. This one here, actually, we're going to change that to continue. And then we're actually just going to push the message in up here. So messages.push assistant data data choices message dot content. So now we can test that. So let's restart the API reopen up postman and let's change this to 2500 words and click send 
So we have an error. Messages is not defined. So that's on line 17. Let's update this array to be called messages. Click save, restart the API. Reopen up Postman and click send. This one may take a minute. Okay, and as you can see here, we have an array with all of this content in. So this is the long piece of information that ChatGPT gave to us over multiple calls. So that works great. So now let's move on to image generation. When we create an article, we may want to create images or a thumbnail or something along the lines of that. So let's create a new post, app.post. This post is going to be called slash image. And that's going to take in a request and return a response. And the const for the body will take a prompt. And that will come from request.body. Then down here we can say open AI dot create image. And this will take in a prompt. It also take an N. That's how many items we want to return. So we're just going to return one for now. And then it's going to take in a size. Now the size for this example, we're going to use 256 by 256. This returns a promise. So we can do dot then. That will return data. So I'm not too sure exactly what this fully returns yet. So I'm just going to console.log data. And then we can have a look through and see what that's actually returning. And then we'll have an error catcher in here as well and just console log that error out. So let's click save on that, restart the API. Open up Postman once again, and we do the same for Postman, but this time we have a slash image. And we have a prompt here, a cute baby chicken on a farm in the style of a cute Pixar character. So we click send. Okay, and in the background here, we have our data. So it's data dot data. Let's click save again, restart. I just want to ensure that we've got everything here. We need to pop in a URL from somewhere. So it's data dot data, and then it's the first instance of that, and then dot URL. So if we click on this URL, it will actually bring up the cute picture of the chicken. So we can actually now convert this to a res.send. Restart the API. Open up Postman. Click send. And we now have our URL in here. So let's copy that URL. And we paste that back into Chrome. And we have our cute rather creepy looking chicken. So we use this for the system. As I say, you can update N1 to N2 or as many as you need. But remember, each image, I believe, costs around two, two cents. Um, so you'll need to keep an eye on that. Uh, so if you increase the size here, for example, 1024 by 1024, click Save and let's restart this and rerun open up postman and click send we should get a 1024 by 1024 image let's paste that into here and there we go we get a much higher resolution image so that's everything we need to do on the api so we'll leave the api running for now um, and we close down index.js and then what we'll do we'll open up a new terminal window by clicking on this plus button over here and we'll CD into Ghostwriter. And I want to install a couple of packages first before launching this. So the first one is going to be npmi, and it's going to be semantic-ui-css. So I only want to install the CSS version of Semantic. This is purely to use the sidebar and also the grid system. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to do ng add at angular slash material and this will install Material UI for us. So this will be for more of the graphic side 
um, and the tables because creating data tables and dialogue windows and toasters and all this sort of interactive stuff is a lot easier using material material was built by google and so is angular so uh, would we like to proceed with this installation uh, yes we would so it's going to ask us a couple of questions in a minute as to the color scheme we want to use and if we want to install fonts so here we go we're just going to choose indigo pink for now uh, do we want the typography uh, yes we do and include and enable animations yes so with those installed let's go into the angular.json file scroll down a little bit to where we see styles and we can see that angular material is in here but semantic ui isn't so we'll need to add that one in so we install that using so we add that using dot slash node underscore modules and then slash semantic dash ui dash css slash semantic dot min dot css and we can hit save and back down in our terminal we can run ng serve and this should now serve the application for our browser it may take a few minutes to do this the first time so once that's compiled successfully we can hit control and click on the link and that will open it up in our browser and we can see here we have our angular application ghostwriter app is running so that's where i'm going to leave it for this tutorial in the next one we'll run through the front end creating the back end part of the cms and also the front end parts if you enjoyed this tutorial please hit the like and subscribe button and check out these videos on screen now to develop more projects like this thank you for watching and happy coding